Okay, this is a, a little style C4702. We're working on that style this week. And you can see that it's quite different from the previous styles we've worked on because there's no darts. The shape of the skirt is also different, so the silhouette is different. And the other thing is that there's a bit of a design line here where the waistband is. So we've actually got a fitted waistband this time and no darts. That is going to influence the way we distribute our growth. We still need to have five centimetres growth around the body, here at the waist, here at the hip, and here at the hem. So because there are no uh, design features that we need to concern ourselves with, from the centre front to the side seam, we can do one value that we increase. And we know that each quarter needs to be 12.5. So we've got 12.5 here. We've got 12.5 on the other side of the front. So that's a total of 2.5 on the front. And then we would have 12.5 on this half of the back, 12.5 on this half of the back. Total 5 centimetres or 50 millimetres. 12.5 multiplied by 4 gives us 50 millimetres. The length of the skirt, we're still increasing the length a total of 6 and 3, so 9 millimetres, and the 6 is above the hip, the 3 is below the hip. So this is kind of the way we can quickly work out our distribution of the grading. Once we've done that, we can go in and have a look at our um, grade plan. So our grade plan blank looks like this. We add our X and Y, and remember the X is always along the centre front and the centre back, and the Y approximately through the hip. And for these waistband sections, I'm putting the Y at the lower edge, the seam edge where it joins on to the skirt. So X and Y are the um, axis that need to be put in and then we need to look at the growth amounts. So we've already decided that it's only one amount of growth through each quarter and the length grows above and below the hip. So there's our 12.5 growth through each quarter for the circumference. Above the hip, we're growing six. Below the hip, we're growing three. And obviously, if the circumference is going to be 12.5 here, this little section of waistband that gets stitched back onto the garment needs to also grow the same amount. And that will apply to the back as well. So we've got 12.5 growth. Our waist sections need to stitch back onto the skirt, so they also need to be 12.5 growth. So you might be wondering what all these different notches are for. We've got a left and a right back. The right back has an extension for the button, and the left back is where the buttonhole will go. Here we've got a two centimetre seam for the zip and here we've got a notch to indicate where the zip length finishes. So I'll just quickly go back to that planning sketch and you can see here on the left back it's flush. If we were to open up this um, waistband we'd see that underneath the right back would be extending out so that the buttons can be attached. So back here, we've got that 12.5, 6 above the hip, 3 below, and we obviously need to match our side seams, so they need to be the same amounts of growth. There's some uh, notches here to help the machinist join these sections together. You can treat these notches in a couple of different ways. If you want to, you can leave them 
in the same position for each size. So that would mean if they're in the centre of the waist, here and here and here, they would remain in the centre. That would be totally acceptable. The other thing you can do is move the notches at the same time as you're moving the side. So the notch can also be increased in the, the Y direction, 12.5. Either is acceptable. The only thing you need to remember is what you're doing to this one. You'll need to do the same thing to this one and this one because they are for the machinist to be able to match the pieces together. This one's the extension. This one's the seam amount. This one here is the seam amount. So they're going to stay the same for all sizes. Once we've got our incremental growth lines worked out and how much the value is in each of those, we can work out where our grade points are. They're a little bit hard to see on this one. So if I just zoom in, whoop, zoom in. Strange that it selected it rather than zooming it. But you can see now that there's little X's on each of those corners here at the waist and so forth. So where each point needs to be graded, we've put our grade points. Then we can work out what the coordinates are for each of those grade points. So we've got for one size up, our measurements are in millimetres. Our starting point here will be zero, zero. We're not making it any wider or deeper on this waistband, only going around the body. So zero, zero here, zero, 12.5 here. In other words, the X axis is not getting any growth, only on the Y axis. For this point here on our front, negative 6 and 0, negative 6 and 12.5 here at the waist corner, 0, 12.5 at the hip area, 3 and 12.5 for both the hem notch and the corner of the hem, and then down here, 3 and 0. So a growth of 3 in the X, nothing in the Y. Once you've got this worked out, pretty much the same thing happens here for the back panels. So negative 6, 0, negative 6, 12.5, 0, 12.5, 3, 12.5, 3, 0. The extra one that we've got here is the notch. The distance between the notch and the waist needs to be same, the same for all sizes because we're not going to change our zip length. So both the notch and the waist move at the same time. And again, the same as the front, we've got zero, zero on all of these points and zero, 12.5 on all of the ones on the corners. Zero, zero and zero, 12.5. So only growth in the circumference for these three waistband sections.